Hello everyone, this is Nicholas Luna, the host of the Practical Entrepreneur Show, a show that shares local entrepreneur stories about their journeys and success about being a small business owner. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's guest is Eduardo Rodriguez, who happens to be a customer of mine. Uh, Eduardo is a marketing entrepreneur, works in the cannabis industry. He's going to share some insight on what he does to be able to separate himself in that industry. Not only that, though, you are going to be very entertained. Ed is super funny, used to be a stand-up comedian, shows you how all of that has all tied in together into marketing. Sit back and enjoy. Well, now that we kind of got warmed up and we're a little, got some adult beverages going. Uh, we're here with uh, our guest here, and it's very rare um, that I actually have one of my customers what? on the podcast. So, uh, Ed? I am health insurance. Or wait, are you health insurance? I'm health... You are health care. Oh, I'm health care. You, you should be wearing that shirt. Oh, uh, no, because then I'm... Yeah, I know. I know. I can go put on my work shirt. That'd be too cheesy. We don't shameless do plug. Shameless we plugs. don't do cheesy here. So anyways, though, Ed, go ahead and give us a little background and... Let us know, you know, who you are, what you do, and um, when you're not being a beer connoisseur, what are you doing Tequila, to relax? Tequila, whiskey. Um, this thing wasn't that good. I thought it was going to be better. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Your face of disappointment it was, was priceless. I guess it was. Yeah. yeah it was. It's like, a, it's like an Italian spritz, like a, you know, but it. It's really not that at all. So it looks like cran royal with like gas. Yeah, it looks <laughs> gross. So yeah, it wasn't that. I'd probably just throw out this, the other one I bought. They were four dollars, but you know I'm making money like that. I could throw four dollars away. No big Oops. deal. No big deal. Um, my background, I think, is it's a. It's a I would like to say it's an it's an in, it's a interesting background. You know. Um, I've ventured in a lot of different places and, you know, I've done a lot of different things. I've been in politics. I've been in the entertainment industry. I've been in the uh, service industry. Um, but as I, as I started getting older, I kind of tied everything together and really saw like, oh, well, technically this is all entrepreneurship. Everything that I'm doing and that itch that I, you know, like I was literally just talking to one of the in San Jose, one of the, one bro was up there and we were talking about, he was like, oh, what, what makes you, like he was talking to C, my CEO and he's like, what makes you become a CEO? Why, why are you an entrepreneur? And true entrepreneurs, they don't say like, oh, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. You're just fucking doing it. And then you're kind of, you know what I mean? Like you're just, oh, oh, that sounds like a good opportunity. Like, you know, maybe not. It's like I was telling you about the app and stuff in that game. It's like, maybe I can't do it right now, but it's still there. Like that idea is still there and the, like the, the drive to like, actually get the resources to do it and do all that. But um, so I guess kind of circling back to kind of what I do and, and what I, I liked about kind of, kind of how I brought it all together was marketing. Mm. Marketing is like one thing that you can apply anywhere. You could apply yeah. it to. And I think a lot of it's overlooked a lot. Mm-hmm. And not only is it overlooked, but sometimes it's ostracized. Uh, that makes sense. Oof, it's a big like, word. Ostracized. Yeah, First because thing I thought it was ostrich, and I'm like, no, 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 because it's like a, you know, like a lot of people, oh, that's marketing, but they're painting, you know, your company. You know what I mean? How many times have you seen one tweet from one company like destroy them or, you know, the revenue, like all kinds of stuff? You know what I mean? I mean, well, I've seen that with actors. Yeah, well, not yeah, with actors, but it's not so much because you're you still have a little bit more to to carry. You know what I mean? As an actor, you can still kind of yeah. you know, build. But when it's like a company and what it stands for, like uh, if when they t- and it happens on Twitter a lot when they take a stand or there was one and I forgot what it was. Was it Papa John? But there was a Papa. John, there was Papa John's has been a bad one, but there was one that like, and this is where it comes to like if you're managing your marketing and kind of staying on top of like your social media and your content because it was like. 
they had scheduled posts, right? So it was already kind of scheduled to ah, okay, to okay. to run. I forgot what company it was. I I wish I could remember, but essentially what it was is they on the day of the the Boston Marathon bomber, they posted something that was very much like, "Oh, we got the bomb deals" or something like that. Uh, and it's like, "Oh, dude, like, you know, if you're not watching it and you're not on top of you know what I mean? Like, hey, what just happened? Like, if there's something that happened like that, you have to be ready as a marketer to, like, pivot or or, or know what's going on and say, hey, we can't post that because it's it's, it's insensitive. Yeah. When was... otherwise, if it wouldn't have happened, it would have been fine because, yeah. you know what I mean? But then it's like, well, you know, people look at it and you're like, what, what are you, what are you, deaf? Like, what are you, you know oh, what I mean, uh, kind of deal? And you're like, yeah. oh, no. Like, like, and obviously it's not intentional. They're not like, you know, like, oh, we support the bomber kind of deal. But yeah. then it's just kind of like... You know, the oversight isn't there, so then it does, it hurts your brand, and then that's when you go into damage control, and, you know, there's a whole thing about that, just your PR and everything, that makes a big difference. And at the entrepreneur level, you can still kind of get away with it, you know? You can. There's, I think there's three uh, political parties. There's Republican, Democrat, and entrepreneur. I don't know. A lot of the entrepreneurs are giving money to, <laughs> to certain parties. So, but yeah, like I said, I mean, for me, it's it's just kind of like doing different things. I, I wish, I really wish that. I think I think Joe Rogan said it in this podcast and saying like, I wish we had enough time to like, hey, I'm going to be a lawyer for like 20 years, and then hey, you know what? I'm going to go be a doctor for another 20 years and then like I'm going to try and be an actor for you know another like we had enough time to just try different careers like literally like just go all in and then oh hey you know what because a lot of the times you get you get to some degree like you get pigeonholed right yeah and it's like I, like even like these athletes or something oh just just play basketball like no we don't want to hear your opinions like oh. they're, they're fuck they're people like you know and they have a platform if anything I would say hey you should you have a platform you should kind of reach to your people you know what I mean? And, and say, you know, a lot of them, a lot of them don't want to because they're like, well, you know what? I just focus on what I do or whatever. And they're not into that stuff. So they're like, I'm not a good voice for it. But if they do have an opinion on it, I, I say speak up. I say you can, you know what I mean? Take advantage because of Because you're not just that. You know what I mean? It's like if somebody was talking about accounting or marketing and then you put some input and they're like, oh, no, you don't know. This is another industry. It's like, well, you're talking. I know what you're talking about. But like, no, you're a healthcare guy. You're a, this is different. Yeah. You don't, you don't get it. It's like, no, I do. It's like, no, no, no. You do that. We do this. Oh, we're real estate guys. You know what I mean? The oh, real estate guys. Real Shout estate out to the real estate the guys. Yep. All about you guys. Cheers for all your advertisements. By the way, real estate guys, we know nobody's asking you any of these questions. We know this. No Every time you say, but. you know what? Everyone's been asking me. Nobody's been asking you anything. I, 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 get, I get the marketing tactic, but... Put some people on there that are actually asking you stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I get so many real estate advertisements on my, let on me, my feed. Let me answer the questions everyone's been asking. Yeah. Like super specific questions. I'm like, nobody is asking about HOAs and, you know, this certain town and how they affect your Melarus. Nobody's asking you that. They're one person. The no, oh, I get so many in my inbox. So you're not getting anything. I think most most consumers aren't educated enough about buying homes to know what to even ask and that's so the thing is that on that same point they're saying that people are asking them and it's, it's a general thing but the problem is a lot of these people aren't actually listening they're not actively talking to people and seeing what is and that's the problem with any brand and anything that you're doing if you're not figuring out you know there's a lot of ego of like you know if you were making that shirt and be like oh well, I like blue and I like white it's like well all of your customers, they like red and they like yellow. What are you going to go with? You have to go with the red and the yellow because it's not about you. You know what I mean? I'd go with blue and white. Yeah, exactly. See, that's your, <laughs> your selfish brander. Selfish brander. See, well, by the way, if you didn't notice, we have a tortilla right here. It's because we love tortillas, especially flour tortillas. There's a flour tortilla. Flour tortilla with butter and salt. Ooh, man, it tastes good. That's a fresh. Good. It has to be oh, fresh. Yes. A fresh one? Yeah. Fire. Like, have you ever had the ones from Costco that are like raw? Uh, no, 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 no. I love Not those. Costco. Not those Costco. are pretty good. I'm, dude, I'm I got, just saying. I got these ones from like uh, my, my brother's, oh, my sister-in-law's family. They're from, uh, I think, Sonora. And they bring these like, they're like paper thin. Oh, and they're like that, like raw. You throw them on there, a couple turns, they're done, ready to go, super soft. Oh. 
I don't know. Good. The ones from Costco are pretty good. They're they're. I, my mom used to. I grew up eating homemade flour tortillas. Yeah. My mom made them, but they were a little bit thicker. And these ones are actually just a little bit better because they're thinner. Yeah, and these are these are probably even thinner. I've had the ones from Costco. Yeah, there's a good. Is there any spot? There's there's tortilla spots in LA, right? Like fresh tortilla spots. Yeah, but they're mainly corn. Most of them. There's none corn. that are very very. I have not found a tortilla place that sells flour tortillas that are thin. I remember one time I went, there's a place here, it's called Carnival, plug. Um, plug. Uh, they have fresh tortillas, and I remember, like, they had, like, literally coming off, like, they have the bag, and the bag's still, like, open, you know? And I was like, oh, I'll get these, and I grab it, and I didn't have, like, I just kind of went for, went in for a couple things. And so I was like, oh, I just carry, like, I had a... It was like one of those barbecue runs. Like, hey, gra- go grab some onions or whatever. And I was like, oh, fresh tortillas. I'm going to get some. Can't go wrong uh, tortillas. <laughs> so I grabbed them and I literally grabbed them. like had them in the bottom of my hand. And I was like, ah! <laughs> they were fresh. They were super, you know? And I was like, trying to, I was trying to hold the bag. But then they were all kind of like, um, you know, they're falling into the bag because they're, yeah. they're flat. So you're supposed to hold it flat. You know, but you couldn't do. I couldn't. I couldn't hold the flat because it was super hot. Oh yeah, because so. you're soft, right? Yeah. Yeah. A little. Uh, you know. Hands. Baby funny hands. story. Funny story about uh about soft hands. I got a story for everything. <laughs> um, we went like a couple years ago. We went to like get wood for like Christmas. You know, get like uh you know firewood. And there was this guy. His name was Mo Jones. Mo Jones. Um, <laughs> Shout out to Mo Jones. His uh, his business card had. It was three people on the business card. So, like, they went in on the business cards. Like, they, they went, like, hey, let's just print the, like, let's all put in over these business cards and we'll put in, like, these different services. He was, like, wood and, like, something else. And then his wife was on the business card, too, and she sold lumpias. And she was, like, it's like lumpia catering. We'll make you lumpias. And then there was another guy on there that was, like, a plumber. And it's just, it's like, I mean, that's collaboration oh, at that's, its finest. Oh, you know? that's awesome, dude. They split the bill on the cards, you know, they split the bill. Anyways, we went and he was basically what the deal was is he lets you fill up your truck, but you got to load it. Uh, And so he'll charge you like, you know how they like, oh, you know, this much wood will charge you this much. He's like, if you you, you load it and you fill it, you could, he'll be like 40 bucks and you could load up your bed as much as you want. Okay. You know, and, but you're loading it, you know? And so we're like, all right, fucking, we went over there ready to work with my brother and I, and he like, he reaches and he grabs my hand. He's like, let me see your hands. He's like, he grabs my hand. And he's like, because he's like, oh, do you guys have gloves? I think he said. And I was like, oh, no, we don't. I was like, we just, you know, he's like, let me see your hand. And he fucking grabs my hand. He's like, your hands are soft. I'll get you some gloves. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. And, uh, and then my brother steps in and he's like super proud. Like, what about mine? You know what I mean? And then he like grabs his hand. I was like, oh, you know, my brother does more like, you know, he, his, his hands are a little, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a nice desk. You know, I, I have nice hands. I moisturize. Anyways, he's, uh, you know, he's got a little bit rougher hands. And my brother steps in super like, what about mine? And he grabs his hand. He's like, you're soft too. <laughs> <laughs> It was like, damn, this dude's a savage. <laughs> he's just like, he's like, you don't want to get yourself a splinter. Like it was like a, uh, oh. it, the guy was a character, dude, a oh. character. That is hilarious. It was dude. like one of those. I'm pretty sure you've seen it. Maybe, maybe in Oxnard or no, because in Oxnard there's like there's like big like ranch houses, right? Like they with like big lots and stuff. No, no, not really. No, no, it's not like uh, Temecula or like Riverside. It, or San Bernardino. Like San Bernardino has like the houses that have big lots, right? Yeah. Or like uh, like Paris Lancaster and stuff like the Paris. Too. Yeah. Well, anyways, it wasn't. My point is, it wasn't like that. But it was like, it was in the suburbs. But his backyard was like, like are we in the suburbs? Kind of backyard. Oh wow. Okay. He had chickens. He had you know all this like machinery for the wood and stuff like that, and wood piled up. It was a crazy backyard, but he did have a hot tub. Ooh. He had a hot tub in the back. He's like, oh, yeah. He's like, me and my wife, we hang out there. And it was like just having a little hot tub. It just, you know, it's, it's funny how like it's still like, you know, no matter how backwoods this guy was, it was like, you know, he was like still bringing it. But it was like he had his, uh, you know, you need your, your pleasure, your little, you know what I mean? Your, your guilty pleasures and your, you know. He, didn't you got, have, he had no baby hands. No, he didn't. He didn't. He, his hands are, you know what I'm talking about. Like, <laughs> hands when, salt. You know his when they're country salt. strong and they yeah. shake your hand and you're just like, oh, oh. what did I fucking I just shake hands with the thing? Like, you know what I mean? It's just like <laughs> rock solid hands. Like, you know, I don't want that. 
You don't want that. You don't. Do you girls? I mean, I'm doing the right thing, right? Moisturizing. So what industry are you marketing in? Um, are we going? We're going into that. I'm we're going just, into I that. We're going to we're gonna go there. I wanted to ask that question. Just I sell weed, kids. <laughs> I sell weed. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I am in the cannabis industry. Um, um, I currently work for um, a startup. We're a startup ad tech company, uh, and we basically facilitate the communication between cannabis companies and a digital audience. So. Um, within the cannabis industry, there's a lot of limitations and there's a lot of what I like to call it from a marketing standpoint is roadblocks. There's a lot of roadblocks that are impeding cannabis companies from reaching consumers, right? So a lot of the main avenues that cannabis companies can use is like, you know, magazines. When was the last time you purchased a magazine? I haven't purchased a when magazine. When was the last time you looked in a magazine and read all the way through it, saw an ad and said, oh my God, I'm getting that. No, you know, so we're on digital. So we get ads to your phone. We, we've established, you know, we have technology that's able to, to serve ads to websites um, and you're able to get back data on how that's performing. So all just kind of digital marketing. It's, it's basic digital marketing, you know, um, but there isn't anything, you know, like that at all within the industry. And so slowly other people are kind of starting to get into it and stuff like that. And the beauty of, of digital is that everyone can connect. Yeah, you know, Facebook connects with Google, Google, YouTube, Amazon, all those guys connect, and that's one of the tools that we have as well, which is called retargeting. If you've ever been thinking something and then you see an ad for it, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> that happens all the time, actually. Well, it's not. It's not that. I mean, I think people forget. You know, I think some of it. I I, I do not put it past Facebook or whatever for them to be listening, but there is a lot of stuff that you forget about. Like if you're, you know, if you're texting. Like your eye messages are read. They they read that. You oh. know what I mean? Like that's it's all saved and whatever. They can your emails are all read. The emails now and, and it and it helps you, right? Because like now when I write an email, the last line if I'm like, Hey, I look forward to hearing from you, it fills it out and you just yes. go, Oh yeah, all right, cool. You know what I mean? But that means it's reading it. Have you ever said like, Hey, I attached this and then didn't attach it? And then it says like, Hey, you didn't attach something. Mm. You never had that happen no. to you? Like try sending an email and say, hey, I've attached blah, blah, blah. Sometimes it's like I've attached the link. So there's technically no attachment. So I'll just be like link below. Like that's what I'm just saying. It. The link's there. But there's no attachment. And Google will be like, hey, are you sure? Like did you forget to attach? Oh, wow. So it already has like it already read your email. It's a good saying. thing and a bad thing. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. the facilitation that like do, do you, you know, are you... You have something to hide, you know what I mean? That's kind of like, you know, we kind of do, but yeah. yeah. But, uh, so you probably have the same roadblocks that the tobacco companies have. Uh, yes, uh, I think a lot of the a lot of the regulations that have been placed on cannabis companies are more, I think, at this point, modeled around what's being used for alcohol. Tobacco, yes, they do have, but tobacco has, tobacco, tobacco obviously has been, you know, pursued for many years on, on their practices and everything, or advertising practices. Tobacco has to have, like, now, like, a full-on, any ad that they have, the it has right? to say, like, in nicotine is addictive, like, an addictive substance and everything. Like, I saw one for Juul, so there was a commercial on TV for Juul, and even before the commercial started, that pops up. Like, they have to, like, tell you. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I know they did. Whoever did the first marketing campaigns for tobacco companies, dude. I remember as a kid, bro. I remember dude, I used to go legit. and buy those those those, those the uh, bubble gum. the bubble gum yeah, cigarettes. Wanted to be cool. Yeah, you're like hey, whoever you know did that. I mean? You guys are geniuses. That was awesome. well, they're evil geniuses because oh, they're marketing course. it to children. Oh, yes. They were marketing it to children. If it's bubble gum. Oh, yeah, I thought about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. It's like bubble gum, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. it's marketing but I'm to talking, children. I'm not talking about that, though. Just like the, the Marble Man. Right? Oh, the Marlboro? Yeah, yeah Marlboro Man. Marvel's a Captain Marvel. That's no, no, a, no. That's not a lady. Marvel. That's a lady. Mar- Marble. You respect the lady. She's a good Marble. lady. Marble. She's a nice lady. Marble Man. Marlboro. Marlboro. Right you, oh, you mean Kramer? No. Kramer was a mall. <laughs> Not talking about Any Seinfeld Kramer. fans out there. Talking about talking about the guy, the, the cowboy, 
who was like all American hero. Mm-hmm. It was like John Wayne of nineteen ninety eighties and nineties. So, anyways, though, so I'm all American. You guys have roadblocks, but you've you've found a way to work around the roadblocks. Is that correct? Exactly. It's what we do is kind of go directly to the source, essentially. So we work directly with sites or, or traffic sources that where since we're able to segment that those advertisers, then we there's certain guys that are willing to take them on. So they'll say, yeah, I'll take them on because they know where they're coming from. And so they know we have categorization that say some guys might say, well, I only want CBD products. Well, OK, we only send you CBD, you know, any of our CBD advertising, we'll put them on there. OK. But other guys are like, I'll take everything. I don't care. And then that, that's the thing. is like People don't understand. People think that cannabis is, is just weed. You're just selling weed. And it's not. There's CBD products. And then even, you know, there's CBD products. There's events. There's, you know, cannabis CPAs, real estate, um, insurance, all kinds of different services. You know, marketing the same way, you know, um, lawyers. Uh, and so there's a lot of services that go around, all the ancillary services. There's accessories that are not cannabis, like pipes, vapes, all this other stuff. And then within CBD, now you go into another hole, right? Because now you have CBD, you have CBD topicals, you have CBD tinctures, you have CBD um, bombs, you have uh, CBD capsules, you have, you have suppositories. And then, uh, so there's a bunch of stuff, you know. Oh, wow. That's the, a lot. Funny story in the suppositories, I have one of my clients, they're an advertiser, and they said that they, they sell out of suppositories so fast. Really? So if you don't know what a suppository is, it goes up your... <laughs> so it's like essentially like you're putting... You're getting high through your butt. <laughs> and they sell out. And it's funny because I'm pretty sure there's nobody that's like, hey, bro, have you tried... You know, but they're buying them. <laughs> they're buying them. They're selling out. You know what I mean? Wow. That is funny. So... It's like, hey, man, you want to get high? Sure, just smoke a joint. Bend it's over, like, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> right in the butt. Straight to the point. Imagine your dad walks in and you're like, hey, no, it's not what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> We're just getting high, dad. You're like, man. <laughs> Is that yeah, because I had, I had mentioned to him because I saw this whole thing on Vice News where there's this guy. For any of you single guys out there looking to make a splash in the dating scene. Ooh, a splash. Uh, there's this guy that essentially you can pay him to run your profile. So essentially he's going to like set up. He does like a whole photo shoot and he like sets you up and he takes you to like these, these succulent walls and these places where you can like, he's like, hey, this is the persona that we're going to build for you for your dating profile. Oh. And not only that, it's like they build it out. They, they, you know, they write your 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 bio, whatever, all that stuff, and they basically are doing it to to uh, you know to, to to make it work. Something's gonna work, and not only that, they also flirt for you. So they're like on there in the DMs, like wherever whoever you match with, and they're like, oh hey girl, whatever. Like and then they're and then they're sending them the like the the comments and all that stuff. I'm like, that's super dope. I'm like, I'm just sitting here and I'm like, they just have like my Calendly account. I just send them the link to my calendar and I'm like, oh, I got a date tomorrow. Like, you know, <laughs> would that be super, like, I mean, you have to pay. I think he, he <laughs> my friend looked into it. That's the problem is he looked into it and he's like, I think the cheapest plan is like $700. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> listen, it's not that far fetched is my point because, if you're looking at it financially, if I have to spend all this time on there to try to, you know, kind of like, and then you, what if you find the one? You find the one, you know what I mean? She didn't fall in love with like the guy that was, you know, you, have, you still have to go out, you know? I'm not saying I'm going to do it, but I'm, I might do it from the other side, maybe monetize and oh, get people wow, in there. Oh, wow, that is awesome. You do a whole dude. photo shoot. And he even like had outfits for him, like, I'll put on this sweater, like, and yeah. then, and they brought him a puppy. Oh, take a picture no, with a puppy. Didn't. That's why I said the puppy. You go succulent wall, you know, like dude. One of my, one of my groomsmen. He has a bulldog, French bulldog. And oh, uh, I hear your story, but I, ugh. Ugh. I gotta get rid of this. I can, yeah. Uh, so he has a French bulldog, and he gets play for days, and. The other day, the dog, like, got sick, right? 
And so he's like, no, I, this dog, he needs to give me like at least six more years, you know, to I get his money's worth. But man, puppies. Oh, I can't believe that. I mean, it's. I mean, it's a good move. It's all. It's, it's a, a solid good, it, move. And I mean, the dogs are. You know, that'd be great for someone who's a great person. Who's just is not very creative and doesn't know how to take pictures and doesn't if, know how to write. If there's two things girls like, it's puppies and brunch. Oh, I'm just saying. Mimosas. I'm just saying. They love brunch. Now, if you take her to brunch and you bring a puppy, you're in, bro. You're in, bro. You could take that from me. You could take that to the bank. So stop me when I lie. That is uh, from the Moss Flow. Moss Flow, if you're listening to this, what's up, man? 805? 805 feed me. <laughs> 805. So I miss a 305. No, 805, man. It's like the freeway here in San Diego. I can't be, I'm from San Diego and I can't be Mr. 619 anymore because Ray Mysterio took it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going up against Ray Mysterio. Yeah, Ray Mysterio is pretty. I mean, short. I've seen it. You know what? I, and short. He's big, but he's short. Weird, uh, weird. I saw him in Edge. Edge, I think it was San Diego. What do you mean? Like the, the wrestler Edge? Edge? Edge. Oh, okay. Raymond, yeah. Ray Mysterio and Edge. I, so I used to go to the gym. He's, he lived in Chula Vista. And I used to go to the gym. And I don't know if you guys remember Conan. Conan, him and Conan were like working out. It was like in Chula Vista. Conan the Barbarian? Conan. You don't remember Conan? No. They used to be on the, they used to be on the other one. They used to be on the NWO. And what was it? WCW. Remember WCW? Yeah. It was Sting, yeah, and Sting. like yeah, yeah, the NWO. It was uh, Kevin Scum Nash, Ball. yeah, Scum yeah, Ball. yeah, yeah. So, and he they they would work out, and they were they were just like if you didn't know who they were, they would they were just buff cholos, you know what I mean, <laughs> like, like with tattoos and everything, you know. And and for some I don't know for some strange reason, the fact they were both working out there, I was like, yeah, I'm that buff. I was like, we go to the same gym. All of a sudden, you're last. Yeah. Come I was out. like, what do you mean? I go to the but gym I with Ray Mysterio. You know, it was like, technically, we go to the same, but I don't really go to the gym <laughs> with him. You know? You don't train with Ray Mysterio? I'm over at the elliptical. And just like, <laughs> <laughs> with your headphones on, doing your 30 minutes of cardio. Elliptical is good for you. I'm getting to the age to where I need to find less impact sports. Yeah. I saw you walking today. You were walking like an old man. Oh, that's how I always walk. I have a, I have a, I have a, that's why I needed insurance. <laughs> so I needed insurance. <laughs> I mean, it's true. I mean, you don't, you got to stretch kids. You got to stretch. <laughs> it's stretching is underrated as fuck. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Super underrated. If you stretch, your life is going to be so different. Life changing. Deep tissue massages all day. And bringing it back to you and the health insurance, there's, if you look into your insurance, there's programs, and maybe you can elaborate a little bit better on it, where you can get like discounts. You can log into your stuff and oh, you can, yeah, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. see like, oh, acupuncture, you get 50% off from like these vendors and stuff like that. So that's kind of cool with just because you have that insurance or whatever. Yeah, there is. And uh, massage therapy sometimes can be covered under physical therapy. So depending on the condition or what in the medical world prescription is that needs to be addressed um a massage therapist usually will be working with a physical therapist so just a little insight as far as getting that extra care yeah get that care kids get that care you you've been in the cannabis industry now for how long Uh, I would say I'm going on three years. Okay. Going on three years. I've been in marketing for a while. I think, um, oh, I thought you were cheersing no, no, no. me. I thought you were cheersing me. I was, um, I think, I think at the end of the day, I mean, it's, uh, as far as cannabis goes, I've, I'm the type of guy to where like, if I'm doing something that I want to know everything around it and, and not be like in a conversation to where like, Hey, you're in healthcare and somebody asks you something about that you don't do. Like say like a certain law that passed yeah. or something like that. If they ask you and you're just like, hey, yeah. I, don't, you know, I don't, I just sell like insurance. You know, <laughs> you want you don't want to look like an idiot. So I've all I've been, you know, I wasn't a big user or anything, but I, you know, I I always continue to like learn and know what's going on and try to stay up to date. Oh, you like <laughs> testing? Yeah, no, 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 no. development. No. Everything like you know, I don't. It's more <laughs> like what's going on and like you know what's going on in California, what's going on in Canada, what's going on in the UK, like you know, okay. as far as. 
laws go and and guidelines for advertising and stuff like that because if you're and that, and now that's ha- that's what has been my strategy behind like marketing ourselves as well is just to make us a resource you know we're not just uh you know a digital marketing avenue but we're a resource to where like hey i know that these guys are a reliable source for anything that's going on in the industry they're not just like a company in that's you know trying to get cannabis clients they're like you know hey i i've, I've got so many people that are like hey i was following your whole like when i think uh the in back in 2018 when they would legalize i was doing like consistent like breaking news whatever was coming oh, okay. out i was pushing it out was, and it's hard because it was creating content like you know having to create content as stuff was changing um and so a lot of people were like yeah like i was i was following all your posts and and it's one of those things i think you mentioned before is this like you know there's people like yeah i see all your stuff all the time and i'm like well, you don't like it you, know you don't like I mean? it you don't comment <laughs> yeah nothing but they're like oh i follow you all the time yeah i saw that and this and this and that and I'm like, you know, but, it, and that's, that's the thing is that you just have to stay consistent and you just have to, if you're adding value, you're adding value, no matter, you know, at the end of the day, they became a client. And so even though they didn't like our posts, it doesn't, you know what I mean? They still found value in what, you know. And actually, um, now that you said that, I, I learned a new term over this weekend. Um, I went to a marketing, let's say it's a marketing conference, but I think I learned a lot more from hanging out with Ed. Um, uh, I learned a new name for a person that is a follower of yours, oh. but doesn't really do anything. They're called an orbit, orbiter. Orbiter, called, it's like along the lines of like ghosting, this is like orbiting. So if you ghost somebody, you just kind of go, Oof, and you just go away, you know, and you just... Don't respond and you just, you know, Ghost. leave them. Yeah, you just leave them, you know, like you're gone. But orbiting is she doesn't unfollow you. Or I guess it's, this is personal yeah. now. And like, or she or he yeah. doesn't unfollow you. Yet they are very much active in what you're doing and watching your stuff and, you know, and, and, and liking your pose. Yet if you like reach out to them or something, they won't answer you. But they're very much watching and seeing what you do. So... Especially when you have a very interesting life, you know, like myself. You myself. are the world's most interesting resident of San Diego. Yeah, no, I'm pretty, I'm pretty interesting. I'm pretty interesting. I like, yeah. uh, I ride scooters. I ride scooters. And then, scooters uh, are fun. Lime, if you're out there, sponsorship, you could sponsor me. I'm, I'm willing to take on that sponsorship. I'm yeah. up for sale. I am up uh, for sale. We will do it for a day's worth of. You know, no, not a day worth of credit. That's like six bucks, bro. Oh man, those things are cheap. Those things are cheap. Six bucks for a day? Like, like if you're, you know, certain if you're just going certain places. One time I spent like twelve bucks with, and I went to a bunch of places where, like, if I would have took Ubers to every single one of those, oh, it would have yeah. been six dollars each. Yeah, each I way. Do I don't. I haven't gotten a, a lift under like six dollars. Like, I used to be able to get those back in the day. Well, yeah, you, I remember before you can get like yeah. a three dollar ride. You yeah. can just go and like, oh, it's just right here. You know, one time I was coming from the bridge over here and right here, and it's because I had a my buddy and he was all drunk. I was like, oh, I can't walk this dude like yeah. all the way home because he lives right down the street. And um, so I got an I got an Uber, you know, and I drove him like just across the bridge basically, and it was like eight bucks. It was like at two o'clock in the morning. Uh. You know what I mean? I was like, God damn it. And then yeah. as soon as I got to his house, he was all like, ah, I'm up. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my great. Yeah, exactly. Round two is about to start. Well, you also said you were in the entertainment industry, and I do know that you were doing a little bit of comedy. Go, go into a little bit of that and what made you <laughs> do that. And- you know what's funny is I, I had recently, who did I, I told somebody that was like, oh, I was previously in the entertainment industry. And I don't know why they took that as like adult entertainment. <laughs> you know, I was like, I've never, I've never, like, I've never had that wow. like misconception. You know what I mean? I mean but I'm I flattered. Would, I would take it as a compliment. I'm flattered. I'm, like, I'm flattered. That's right. I was an adult entertainer. Hey, if you're gonna do something, be be the best at it. Yep. You know what I mean? And I was a great fluffer. I was amazing. Ooh. Fluffer. Fluff and fold. The fluff and fold. Fluff and fold. Anyways. Um, yeah, I, I did um I did stand up comedy I would say maybe for about eight years. Um but it's uh, it's a tough business and it's uh it's one of those businesses to where like to some degree you can be really good but 
there's people that have been doing it so long that aren't as good and they don't want to give you their spot. You know what I mean? Mm. They're like, I come here every night and I've been working this club or I've been doing comedy in LA for 10 years. And then this stupid kid walks in here and he destroys, you know? And they're like, no, no, like, that's not cool. You know, that same, like, old guy, like, hey, I've been here. Been Nobody could do it. Yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't get it. You don't get it. My show. But the reason that I liked it, too, was it, as far as the audience goes, it was the greatest form of justice. Like, I wrote this. I performed it. You know, I wrote it. I performed it. I wrote it out. And I worked it out. It's all mine. You know, when people laugh and when it works, it's all yours. You know, unless you have like a writer or whatever, but it's like, and if it doesn't work, there it is. It doesn't work. And that's a great, good, big thing. Like, I think that that's kind of where I got my instant feedback. Yeah. But I, and, and that's kind of like when I started doing stuff like this, like, you know, like radio and, and stuff like that, it's, it was harder. It was hard for me to really kind of keep going and to say things because I was, I was used to like, oh, that works. They like that. Let yeah. me keep doing that, you know, or because I was always kind of like, you know, it's you're on stage, but it's like your your brain's just in tune. At least for me, there's certain guys that they're like script guys. They, I'm on the script. Yeah. I like. I used to like. I never. I was never a big. I never like clowned people a lot, like in the crowd. But I would. I would use them to feed me, like whatever okay. was going on, or 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 they or lead me into a joke. Okay. You know what I mean? Where whichever direction they would take me, then that's the way we would go. You know what I mean? Um, like. I used to have a I used to have a joke that I would say, well, what's the best thing I would ask like if it was a couple, what's the best thing you ever um, ever bought your man like the girl, because mm. I mean not a lot of girls will buy. <laughs> I'm going there. I'm going there. Um, there's not a lot of girls that are, that that go out of their way to like purchase something for their guy. You know what I mean? Like it's a, a lot of times it's usually a lot of the guys that are out like you know spending the money and stuff like that. But my, that was my point of asking to where, like, if you told, like, one of my friends was like, well, that's not a fair question because I bought, like, my boyfriend, you know, these shoes or whatever that he really wanted or this thing that was very sentimental. And I was like, but when I ask you that, you say that. I'm not setting it up to where, like, oh, well, how much money did you spend on your man? It's like, no, you say, hey, you know, I'm, I buy very thoughtful gifts. Everybody buys different. Some people, like, buy really expensive gifts. Some people really put, like, thought into it. And that's where it's up to them to answer but a lot of them would be like, yeah. like, when was the last time you bought them a present or something? They would always kind of be like, yeah. So my market research was like, that's what would usually happen. Sometimes the girls would be like, oh, I bought this dude a car for his birthday. He'd be like, oh, damn. damn. You know, like, okay, like there's something like that. And it didn't have to be something huge. It could have been something very thoughtful, like, oh, you know, his, his mom passed away and I got him this and it reminded him of his mom. And it's like, okay, then that's, that's what it is. You know what I mean? And so the whole joke was based off of uh, actually, I, I, a lot of the, a lot of the jokes they're not really true, you know what I mean? Like they're not. Okay. You're writing, and you know, um, it didn't really happen to you, you know. Like, okay. Last week wasn't last week. When okay. you hear you last week was at the store, it's like no, you weren't, okay. you know. But um, one of the I got it from it was actually from Laura in America that I that I that when that joke I still remember like conceptualizing it because there was a a lady, you know what I mean? And and then she said something. It's just like, oh, hey, he's, you know, they're fighting Laura. Ella no me da nada. Señorita Laura, ella no me da nada. No quiere. Oh, yeah. no. Él me engaña. Nothing fucking, <laughs> you know? And so the lady was like, was like, oh, because he, 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 no trabaja, señorita Laura, no trabaja. And then she's like, oh, entonces tú que nada más, nada más te gastas el dinero. And then she's like, señorita Laura, yo le doy mi tiempo, mi tiempo, señorita Laura. He's like, y mi tiempo vale oro, señorita Laura. And I was like, oh, get out of here. I was like, really? I was like, really? She's like cleaning up this dude's check, you know? And she's just like, oh, well, he gets time with me, you know? Oh, I was just like, man. And I'm not the type to be like, oh, you know, I'm nowhere that. But but it was just interesting for me to see that, you know what I mean? And that's where I kind of conceptualized that. I was like, oh, that's, that's interesting that she was like, you know what I mean? Like, that was like, oh, well, he gets to have me in his presence. Like, you know, I was oh, like, oh, come on. And it's, you know? it's good enough, right? It's very, very... Vale oro, señorita Laura. Oh, very, yes, very love, interesting. Laura. Well... I can only watch so much of it, though. It, 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 you just need about a good 20 minutes of it. 
I think you five minutes. There's always weirdos in the crowd. Like there's like the dude that was all, all hairy and stuff. Like and they just <laughs> pan over him. Like he's just a you know. Oh, there's a werewolf in the crowd. Big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Big deal. There's infidelity on stage. You know what I mean? Like that's what matters. It's like, normal. Yeah. No. He's normal. These people over here are the weirdos. The one there. Oh my god. Say it aloud. That's hysterical. Do you think some of the stuff that you learned from like stand up comedy helps you in marketing? Yeah, and I think that that was something that I was actually, you know, I've I've thought about because because what a lot of people don't think about is marketing is storytelling. Yeah. You know. And a lot of people look at it differently. A lot of people a lot of people approach marketing very much from a sales aspect. Mm-hmm. Yet marketing like I said before, is a lot of the times is ostracized to where they're not with the sales department. They don't work directly with the sales department. If marketing and sales work together, then then sales can communicate with marketing and say, "This is what I'm getting." Okay. This is what people are looking for. Okay. These are the requests that I'm getting. These are the the misconceptions I'm getting. You know, whenever I jump on the phone with clients because they say, "Oh, well, this and that. Oh, don't you guys do this?" It's like, no. So it's like. Kind of getting that you got to get the right message out there, and like I said before, is really getting to your client's brain to know okay. what are they thinking and what's going to capture their attention. Got it. You know what I mean? What's wh- what what need are you filling? You know what I mean? A lot of the times, there's a lot of companies and or or, or businesses. You know, guys that want to start this or that. It's like you either have to be filling a need that isn't being, you know, met that nobody's filling or fill a need that isn't being filled correctly. You know what I mean? If, if you say, Hey, this is Uber or whatever. I think I could do a better job than Uber. I okay. think I have a better idea. I think I could scale it better. And I think I can improve on that. And that's exactly how Uber started because they looked at the, you know, the transportation industry and taxis and all that. And they said that we can, we can improve that. Yeah. You know, it's usually how it works is that, um, there's a problem, you fix it. You have a business. Now, sometimes people always think like, oh, well, there's already a solution for that, so I don't need to fix it. No, you can always make it better. Um, if that were the case, then there wouldn't be so many different hamburger places because McDonald's is pretty good at serving up a lot of damn hamburgers. But... There's a lot more quality burgers from different restaurants. So I like that. Yeah, and the same, the same I, I think on that same point of like, oh, there's a bunch of hamburger places. You know what Carl's Jr. is. Yeah. You know what Coca-Cola is. Yet Coca-Cola and Carl's Jr. are consistently advertising to you. And so when I talk to clients and they're not investing in marketing, they're like, oh, well, I'm focusing on this or I'm focusing on that. It's like, but if people don't know about you, it doesn't matter. If you're not exposing yourself and you're not consistently out there branding yourself and, and connecting with clients and, and, and prospecting clients, it doesn't matter how great you are. And that was something that I had to kind of, you know, come to terms with myself because when I was doing comedy, I would watch like, you know, I'd watch guys on TV or I watched I was like, I'm funnier than this guy, but he's getting on stage and he's putting himself out there. I could do that. And, you know, if people prefer to be the like, ah, this guy sucks. You know what I mean? And that and, and, and that's why I don't like it's like, um, you know, there's it's, it's easy to be cynical. It's easy to be negative. It's easy to say or and it's easy to blame. Right. It's like if it wasn't for this guy, I'd be there. Or if it wasn't for this, if I was if I was white, then I'd be killing it right now. It's yeah. just like, it, but that's not the case, right? So you have to find a way. It doesn't matter. Like you're, you know, I understand that there's there's barriers and there's, mm-hmm. there's definitely you barriers. Know, exactly. There's barriers and there's you know there's different you know it's like uh there's there's roadblocks like I said uh um the same way you know there's. I have to work a little bit harder to get there, right? Like, and it's just, that's just, just what it is. Like, well, I can't do anything about that. It's like the, it's like the kids for the USC thing that their, their parents were like paying and, yeah. you know, I did, I was like, yeah, that, that's what they do. I, I didn't think it was, you know what I mean? I was like, hey, my parents can't do that. 
So I, I don't have that opportunity. I didn't even know it was illegal. I just figured, yeah, that's what they do. Like, yeah. everyone knows that. <laughs> like, and you know what I mean? It didn't seem like, it just seemed like, yeah, that's what rich people do. Like, they pay their way in, you know? Yeah. We, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for us to just think that's kind of like how it is. But when that, when that first broke out, I just looked at it like, they're the ones that got ripped off. I mean, because... But they, the, the irony of it is, is that they see, like the, the parents, right? They see a lot of value. And that, they see a lot of value in their kid going to like USC, right? Yeah. But it's more for them that they're going to say, my kid goes to USC. Yeah. Because if you, if you see, I think it was the, the, the lady from Full House or something, her daughter was like some kind of influencer or something yeah, like that. Yeah, YouTuber. You know, you, yeah, so... Um, but she didn't care. Yeah, like, she yeah. didn't care about going to USC. Like, she was just like, ah, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, oh, my God, I went to a party last night. Yeah. And it was like, you know, it was like super like, like, she didn't care. You know what I mean? Like, they could. I mean, the fact that maybe she couldn't have got in the USC is another story. Maybe she wasn't smart enough to get in or whatever it may be. Probably. You know, but it, she, that my point is, like, she she didn't care to go to USC. It was just more of like. Oh, my friends are going there or whatever it may be. It wasn't like, oh, I want to go there because I want to learn, you know, physics or whatever the hell. You know what I mean? Like, it seemed like the parents cared more about, no, you're going to USC. You can't go to Santa Monica Community College. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of like, oh, you know, I I don't want to go to school or or I want to go be this or, you know, I want to go be an electrician or whatever it may be. And it's like, no son of mine. It's it's, Mm -mm. it's more about them than about the kid. You're going to be a Trojan. I can see that. Because it's like... Trojan a, man. Dude, that was a good marketing yeah. campaign right there, Trojan man. Yeah. Wrap it up, kids. Wrap it up. <laughs> it's a dangerous world out there. It's so funny. When you said it, the first thing I thought about was the Dave Chappelle. Uh, so oh, the sign? Wrap it up, B. For those who watched the original Chappelle show, that Chappelle was a show. nice Chappelle flashback. Show. If you don't know what that is, Ow. I recommend you to Google it. What's a, what's something that, you know, we, we covered a lot. We went all over the place. This one, this podcast really didn't have any structure. Uh, and, uh, Sometimes it's all over the place. Uh, we can go a little bit structured at the end. Nah, if you want, if you want I, to get into like practicality, I, I, we can get into practicality of, uh, I recently had a friend who said, like, I have a bunch of product, right? And they were like, I think I got too much product, right? Like, I need to sell it. And I may have, like, I'm in deep because I purchased all this product and now I need to move it. And so on that same sense, it's like, then that means you got to get in and sell it instead of just being intimidated by it and being scared, like, oh, I don't know if I could do this. It's like you mentioned you're the chick that was selling, you know, Sold 36 T-shirts. Oh, yeah. You know? So he told a story about an influencer that had over 2 million. 2.6 million. Um, and she uh, did a, cam- a campaign to start her own fashion brand, and she couldn't sell 36 T-shirts. The crowd was, like, really quiet, and I started busting up laughing at the fact that she couldn't sell 36 T-shirts. And everyone looked at me like, Oh my God, I can't believe you're laughing. I'm just like, I can sell 36 t shirts at a farmer's market on a Saturday. But see, here's the thing on that. Did she actively try to sell the shirts or did she just post the link? You know what I mean? And, that, and that's, that's my point. It's like, that's where I want to provide more practical. Like, did she jump in to, you know, to people that she knew were potential customers and DM them uh, and say, you know hey, you know what? Like, it, it, that's the thing. If you're providing enough value, by the time you get to the selling point, they're going to be like, yeah, sure. Like, yeah, yeah of funny. course I'll buy a t-shirt. Like, that's a dope didn't. shirt. She and probably just posted something. And there's so many variables. Yeah. You know, I always, that, that's another thing that I, that I deal with with, uh, with with marketing clients. Because they'll say, well, this doesn't work. And it's like, well, what, what did you do? Well, I did this one thing, and it didn't work. Ah. You know, or usually it doesn't go, well, we've done everything. We've done everything. Well, okay, so did you do this? Well, no, we didn't do that. Okay, did you do? Did you did you work on your creatives? Did you put new pictures? Did you test creatives? Did you put you know multiple pictures to see which one works? 
well, no, we only have this one. We don't have a graphic designer. And I was like, okay, then you go and you find something. You find a way. That's not my fault. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, at that point, it's not my fault. And they're blaming us. Yeah. Like, this doesn't work. It's like, well, let, let, all right, let's go to your site. Maybe that could be an issue, too. Maybe what if her, what if her site was down for, like, half the day? And the, she could have sold, you know, more, more shirts, but her, her merchant processing wasn't working. So you need to go through and check all those little you know, boxes to make sure everything is streamlined. You know, there was a client that said, well, it looks like people are falling off after clicking and getting through two pages. Mm -hmm. they, they land on my, on my page and then and then they, it looks like they're falling off. And so we literally sat there and went through it. OK, click. Now I'm going through the site. OK, this is some pop up. And it was a pop-up for like a warranty. But they, you hadn't even purchased the product and they were already selling your warranty. warranty. So you needed to click out of the warranty and then still go look at, get the product and go to your cart. And then it sends you here. It's like, dude, I've already clicked on like six pages and I still haven't gotten to like the end of the purchase process. Mm. So you need to streamline that process of like, if it's, if the ad is, is, is tailored off of like just awareness then you're just making people land on your page or you're just trying to gather leads and you're just trying to get them to go and like, you know, you're landing them on a page where say they're going to put in their email. It's something where you collect the lead you're, and then you can remarket to them in different fashions or email drip campaigns and all that good stuff. But if you're trying to get them to buy a specific product, say you have like a deal that says like 20% off of this product, you know, and, and they're like, oh yeah, I want to buy that. Yeah. Then you want them to go to that product mm -hmm. and you want that, you know, you want that experience to be like, boom, here's yeah. the product, buy here, boom. Like, at least in two or three clicks, you should already be checked out. Not six. You know what I mean? Yeah, and because you're going to be like, like, to me, I was like, a warranty? Like, why would I purchase a $30 warranty on this product? You know what I mean? And yeah, so it just didn't make sense to me, and it was impeding the sales process. Maybe after, then you sell them, like, the warranty yeah. or whatever it may be, because you already got them at the purchase, you yeah. know? A lot of, and that's why you could place pixels and stuff like that to where, like, that's where the retargeting comes in. If somebody gets to the sales page and they get to the cart, right. and I guess that goes back to the same point of, like, it's easier to blame and to say, well, that shit doesn't work. Well, it's like, well, what did you do to actually figure it out? You know what I mean? I mean, I can't tell you how many people tell me Facebook, Facebook ads don't work. Right. As, as much as I hate to admit it, if Facebook ads didn't work, we wouldn't have the shitty president that we have now. Oh, my God. Facebook ads work, though. They do. It's, it's on the content, and it's, it's, it's a lot of stuff that you got to... It's a lot of work that you got to do before. And it's not definitive. It's, it's, not, it's yeah. not binary, like, oh, I do Facebook, and that's it. It's like, well, what do you do on Facebook, and who's yeah. your audience? And who, you know, There's so many variables. It's not just like, hey, just place an ad on Facebook, and you'll be fine. Yeah. You know? It's a little bit more work than that. Um, any last piece of advice you want to give to anyone that's under 25 and maybe trying to get into the cannabis industry because they think it's cool and they can make a lot of money? I would say if that's the reason you're trying to get in, don't get in the industry. I think, I think the, the issue with any, any industry, if, if that's your goal, I mean, then jump into sales and just do sales, but it's not... Long term, you're not, that's, you know, it, it, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't work out and you're going to get pissed off and you're going to, you know, it's a difficult industry and there's a lot, like I said before, there's a lot of roadblocks and there's a lot of things impeding you that you have to be ready to, to pivot. You have to be ready to, to lose. You have to be ready for, for obstacles. And so if you're not that type of person, you know, it's, that is willing to take the risk, there's still risk. Everything still has very much a lot of risk. I mean, there, you know, and that's part of it. And, and I, I was at an event one time with like investors and a lot of investors were like, well, what do you think it's, if I get into this and is it more low risk than this? Because, you know, investors are always trying to lower their risk. And there was an, uh, you know, a big investor basically said, look, if you're afraid to deal with the product and to be involved with it, this, you shouldn't be in the industry at all because that's what, that's the basis of the industry. You know, and if you're that fearful of it, then you probably shouldn't be in it because you're not willing to, to take it on. You know what I mean? The, that, that's the guys who win. The guys who are like, you know, the guys who, who, who just say, hey, I'm going to go for it. I don't care. Like, I'm just going to take the risk. You know what I mean? So in, in any industry, you know what I mean? Totally, totally get it.
that's cool. I hope people listen to that because, you know, just because uh, it is going to be a big industry, and yes, you can make a lot of money, um, especially if you get in, you know, early, you know, it's like... I mean, like I said, it's bring value to it, right? Bring value from what you already know, what you already do, and bring it to the industry to be able to, to market, you know, or to, 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 to improve things because a lot of people within the industry aren't... A lot of them made a lot of money just from selling weed, you know, and they don't understand, like, business, and they don't understand marketing and stuff. And they made plenty of money just by selling weed to people, and they think weed sells itself. But when everyone's selling the same weed, what differentiates your weed from that other guy's weed? This guy's cheaper. I'm just going to go with him. You know what I mean? Or this guy's closer to my house. I just go there. You know, so it doesn't, you know... At the end of the day, what I like to pretty much push is just marketing. Uh, I'm, it's not so much the cannabis side of things, but just marketing in general. You know, I do work with small businesses and everything like that to try to Including help myself. them, you know, market and, and help build a robust strategy because if you're just doing one thing and you're a slave to that one thing, that one platform, if all you do is a podcast or all you do is just Twitter or Instagram, if, you know, if, if, the, if, it get, if it gets shut down, then, you know, you're you're asked out. And then I, I mean, it, I mean, think about that kid, uh, that kid that like got super pissed because YouTube wasn't like giving him his views or whatever. You know what I mean? Like literally going to go shoot up YouTube because it's like, hey, you're taking away my views. It's like, dude, well, you should have your videos everywhere. Have a website. Have You know what I mean? Like, Or make better videos. Exactly. If you're only going to sell, you know, 36 T-shirts. <laughs> but, you know, to that same point, if you sell 36 T-shirts or you sold fucking five shirts, but you go back and you're like, okay, what happened? And you fix it and you continue to try. Maybe next time you sell 40 shirts. Like, damn it. Okay, well, what is it? And that's that's the process, right? It's just, and but that's the thing is like it, it takes a certain type of person to continue that process. A lot of people they get that first hit, you know. It's like um, it's how Mike Tyson, you know, he's here right now. Mike Tyson, um, he says um, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face, you know. <laughs> and he it does true. You, everyone has some plan, but just as soon as you get in there. And, you know, you sell 36 shirts and you thought you were going to make tons of money. You, you just got punched in the face. And what are you going to do? Now you have to now you have to like, oh, shit, I have to do something different, you yeah. know, because you got punched in the face. So. That's super dope. I like Mike Tyson. Keeps it very simple. He, he did an interesting thing that I, I remember he would say that whenever he got into the ring, he was like super in mode. And that he would, like, basically get into the ring and just make eye contact. Yeah. And as soon as he saw that guy go, like, you know, his eyeballs just kind of broke. Like, he broke that he eye contact. He was like, I already, I already beat this guy. Already in his head. Before they even started fighting, he's like, I already got this guy beat. He's afraid of me already. Like, I already got him beat. I'm already, like, psychologically already beat him. And I was like, wow. Like, that's crazy that it's, like, the whole thing. Like, he's, 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 he's in the zone. You know what I mean? Like, super in the zone. Like, what is, you know, and he's watching all those little nuances. You know what I mean? And that's like a guy that you could say like, oh, well, he's just a boxer, but boxing like he, you know, it's like it's like applying that same thing somewhere else. You know what I mean? It's like applying the same passion that he had for boxing. If you have a passion, someone has a passion for video games or whatever, it's monetizing it and, 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 you know, applying it and making it work. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I wonder what happened with Holyfield when he tried to intimidate him when he lost. Did you ever watch that fight? The one where he bit his ear off? Yeah. Or? I think at that point, Tyson was more... He was so good. He, was, he wasn't at his prime, though. That, and he was frustrated. You know, I think... This is more, like, you know, in-depth. Because you know? I've seen interviews. And he just, like... It, 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 it sucks because you get a guy like that, and, you know, from his background and stuff like that, and you hand him millions of dollars, and you know what I mean, like he's out of supermodels, and and he the the problem was that he was like once the money was, goes, well, no, he was not. So do the hoes. That's what. Hey, no, that, and that was naive of him, you know, because he was very like much in love with like, oh, like this is my girl, and then as soon as she was like, ah, like, uh, you You're know, broken, yeah, yeah, anymore. or whatever. So it kind of, you know, 
That's the problem. See, that's why you need to be like, Rocky, get yourself an Adrian. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yo, Adrian! I don't think she ever found her hat from the first movie. <laughs> she was running. She has a hat fell off. The fact that she's... Adrian! <laughs> I still remember that. It's hilarious. That her hat fell off. I remember the hat. I was like, oh, man. I, I would go back for the hat. That's just me. I don't like losing things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I hate losing things. Oh man, I lost a, I lost a, like a battery pack for my phone in in, in Italy, and I remember. And then as soon as I like started like, duh, 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 and I was like, that's where I left it. I knew exactly where I left it, and I just forgot about it. I was like in some cafe, and there was like plugs right under the bench. Oh, you had it charging. And I was like, oh, perfect. Then I plugged it in, and they were like, all right, let's go. And I didn't, you, you know, have to grab it. Yeah. So Makes I, sense. I'd, I'd hate to close on that, but. Hey. I mean. Like I said, it's just it's just about it's just about fucking jumping and don't be afraid to try different things. At the end of the day, that's what it, entrepreneurship's all about. It's just doing different things and, and collaboration. You know, helping people out. That I think that's been my biggest biggest thing. Like I ran a charity and stuff like that, and just giving giving back without looking for something in return. You know what I mean? Because every, you know it's it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt you. You know what I mean? It's like you call me and you're like, hey, I need this and that, or what do you think I should do? It's like I could easily have been like, oh, bro, like whatever. Like, yeah. you know, like it's like, oh, how does this benefit me, Nick? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, but it's, oh, yeah, let me, I'll help you out. I'll give you some tips or whatever. The same way to where, like, if I have a question about, you know, like I think uh, I hit you up when I needed, like, the, the form, the tax form. And I was like, dude, I don't know how to, how to find that thing. You know what I mean? And that's the same thing. You're like, oh, here, I'll help you out, you know? And there's a lot of people that are very much, you know, like, well, what do I get? What do I get? You know, and everything comes full circle. There's, I hate the the term self made, mm. you know, because I don't think that's I don't think that's true. I think that's the complete fallacy. Nobody's self made. It, someone helped you out. Someone gave you tips, or you even just as simple as like there's someone that you watched and followed. You know what I mean? At some point or another, you got some kind of break. You know, there was some guy that believed in you, and he was like, "All right, I'll buy," you know a thousand units or whatever, you know, and it was, you know, sometimes it is because they believed in you. They didn't, you know, they gave you that chance and that's when you're able to scale up. All right, this guy really kind of helped me scale up my business and gave me that confidence. And that's a big deal in business. Once you have that confidence, you're like, Oh, this is a good product. This is a good yeah. service, you know, and that's a big, that's a huge deal. So nobody's self-made. And so that's why I always say, Hey, you know, reach, reach back, you know, and, and help other people. You know, they say Harriet Tubman not only got out, but she went back and got some more. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so you really have to, like, help people out. A lot of people get, get higher and they get older, and it's like, oh, these kids don't know shit. But then when they were younger, they were like, oh, these old guys, they don't help. You know what I mean? And so yeah. it, it's like, well, when you were younger, you were looking for somebody to guide you, somebody to help you. Yet now that you're older, you're not, you know, looking back. back. Yeah. Yeah, there was, like I said, one guy that was uh, saying... Oh, you can't do what I do, you know? And I was like, I'm pretty sure I can. If I took the time and learned what you did, and eventually I could probably do exactly what you do. But the fact that he said that, I was like, you're, you're, you're done. Because those are the type of guys that get pissed off when young guys come and take their job. Why? Because they're comfortable and they think that nobody can do what they do. You should go in every day thinking that there's somebody at your heels coming for you and they're doing exactly what you do. And they're going to beat you. And so you need to stay ahead of that. You know what I mean? I always, I always see like, the, like when you're in traffic, want to know the best way to make somebody go, get beside them. Try to pass them. You could be behind them and they'll be going slow. As soon as you get beside them to try to get in front of them or pass them, they'll speed up. Mm. They want you behind them. And they always complain, oh, this guy's tailgating me. Just get out of the way. I don't mind. Hey, this is the rate that I'm going. I'm not looking next to the guy next to me. You know what I mean? I'm not looking and seeing what they're doing. I'm looking at where, what's my route. Hey, right now I need to be going slow. You know, I'm not even from a yeah. driving app, but from like, say, a business. Hey, right now we, we need to kind of build this runway. Hey, that guy's going faster. He's got more runway. You know, I'll get out of the way. Go ahead. You know what I mean? Passing lane. Pass me up. But a lot of these guys, they want you to stay behind them because that means they're first. But they're going slow. Hey, everyone around you is going faster. You got to get out of the way. And I'm telling you, try it 
try it when you're on the and it's just it's it's it's, it's such a it's so psychological and it's so like you know what I mean to see it and like just you're on the freeway and you're like that's true I always get people to like they'll speed up it could be an old lady <laughs> so I swear they always speed up because they don't want they don't want you to pass them yeah that's a really good it's interesting analogy. it's it's interesting psychology I always do it on the road like I get them to speed up and then I go behind them and then I you know what I mean like they're not letting you pass them you, you use them now they're speed up and then you pass them around so that's hysterical yeah. Ed been a pleasure uh we're supposed to wrap this up like 15 20 minutes ago there's plenty of content on there oh yeah but it's officially a wrap cut <laughs>